Right. Welcome to Center of Math's Problem of the Week. For this week's problem, we want to find the coefficient of x squared uh, in this recurrence relation. So let's start out by writing the first few terms. So this is a1, a2. Uh, the first thing we should note is that this thing here, every time we go to the next term, this 4 is always a 4. So uh, for a n, the coefficient of x to the 0 is just always 4. Now, the co let's look at the coefficient for x now. Uh, going from a n to a n plus 1, to get the coefficient of x of a n plus 1 in terms of the coefficient of x, we can set up a recurrence relation. If we call uh, bn the coefficient of x in the term an, so in a1 is just 4, a2, it's uh, minus 16, uh, minus 4 to minus 16. Uh, we see this recurrence relation will hold true. And we know this holds true because to calculate the coefficient of x, we subtract 2 from the previous term, it gives us a 2 here, and then we square it. And to get the coefficient of x, we have 2 times the previous coefficient of x plus 2 times the previous coefficient of x, which is just 4 times the previous coefficient of x. So, the, so it's going to go minus 4, minus 16, minus 64, et cetera. And so we can write this explicitly as uh, bn equals minus 4 to the n. Now we can look at the coefficient for x squared. Uh, and to get the coefficient for x squared, we're going to set up another recurrence. So we're calling cn the term in front of x squared for an. Uh, we can see that this recurrence is true by explicitly trying to calculate x squared from a previous term. Because to get the x squared term, we subtract 2 again. We got 2 here. Uh, 2 times x, the 2 times cn plus 2 times cn is a, uh, the par of x squared you get from, the, from multiplying together x squared and the x zero term. And then the x to the 1 term squared also gives you part of the x squared term. So that's where the 4, the 2n comes from. And these two parts together, together give you the whole of the next term. So this will hold true. So now to finish the problem, we just want to find an explicit form for cn. So writing out the first couple terms, So we see in general, cn can be represented as the sum from uh, 4 to the 2n minus 1 to 4 to the n minus 1. And we see this by, uh, if you calculate c2, it's 4 squared plus 4. You multiply this by 4 and then add uh, 4 to the 2n minus 1 for each term. And it ends up working out, so you get this nice summation. And to con condense this thing, uh, we can multiply both sides by 4 minus 1. So upon mu multiplying by 4 minus 1, this is a common uh, strategy for simplifying geometric sequences. Uh, so this whole thing times 4, it moves everything up 1 power, and then minus 1. Every term will cancel out except for 4 times this highest power minus this lowest power. And so we get this thing right here. And then we divide and we divide and we get cn equals 4 to the 2n minus 1 minus 4 to the n minus 1 over 3. And this is our answer. And we can check it uh, for n equals 1. We have 4 minus 1 over 3, that's 1. For n equals 2, we have 4 to the 3 minus 4, which is 60 over 3, which is 20 which lines up with this. So we, we see that it works, and we prove that is in fact true, and uh, this gives us our answer. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like this, please check out centermath.org, uh, check out our blog, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you.